as u minus t s plus p v. <coughs> so we therefore have. अरे भाई बातें खत्म करें ना अलग अलग बिठा दूंगा मैं दूसरे कोने में बिठा दूंगा मैं जाके है ओके सो वी हैव देर फॉर फोर एनर्जी फंक्शन यू एच इंटरनल एनर्जी एंसार पी हेलमोल्स फ्री एनर्जी एंड गिप्स फ्री एनर्जी वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड what they stand for and where they can be useful um this is what we will do either in this lecture or at least this week jo baat humne dekhi wo ye ke these are all um uh, lijan transforms of each other and uh, i tried to give a very general picture of them towards the end but um, i think what i can do over here now is to start with du being expressed as tds minus pdv in the very well known expression that we have been using so frequently and dh as a transform of u with respect to this it is equal to tds plus vdp and then df as uh, a transform of this and that is equal to minus sdt minus pdv and dg equal to minus s d t plus v d p okay please note down these expressions because these are going to be tremendously useful in calculating thermodynamics uh of various kinds ye baat humne dekh li Okay, we have pairs of conjugate variables and these pairs are um s and t and p and v and if you like mu and n and of course some similar variables if we include um other thermodynamic uh, work also magnetic work and um, electric work and elastic work and so on and so forth then we will have other variables but but, but this is going to be a constant pair of conjugate variables in thermodynamics other quantities can vary depending upon what system we choose to study and uh, i think i had derived these expressions the last time so you already have the derivation of these expressions from your last lecture and from these then one can very quickly see from the top if you take d du equal to tds minus pdv and divide this equation by ds and take then um v constant then this this term will vanish because uh for constant v dv by ds is equal to 0 and therefore we get the expression t equal to partial differential now when you hold the other thing constant then total differential becomes partial differential 
du by ds at constant v. Okay, this was, I did this step just to uh, remove any mystery about how we get um, temperature equal to this quantity. And if I don't repeat all of this, then I can very easily see from this same expression, the original expression, that minus P will be equal to partial differential of U with respect to V when I hold entropy constant. Is that the name? Alright, so we have therefore this expression also coming in from the same first equation. And the first equation, du equal to Tds minus Pdv, we get these two equations, these two relations. Similarly, we starting with dh equal to Tds minus plus Vdp, we can um, get uh, this expression T equal to dH by dS at constant P and we get V equal to dH by dP at constant S. Alright? So I hope this uh, derivation of these relations is obvious and very clear to everybody. Okay? Um, I can, starting from the third relation, I can write down minus S equal to partial differential of F with respect to T at constant V and I can also get uh, minus P equal to partial differential of F with respect to V um, at constant T. So I'm getting various relations for these uh, thermodynamic variables in terms of these energy functions. And okay, <clears throat> so I'm writing the third book. Um, and I can also get from the last last of these four equations um, minus s equal to partial differential of g with respect to t at constant pressure um, and volume equal to partial differential of G with respect to P at constant temperature. So I have therefore these equations that can be very easily derived from these other four relations. And, um, you know, we will have numerous such expressions and um, there is no need to remember them by heart. They will all be, you know, the, 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 all of this is, is, will be very clear to you in a minute when I explain a few things, yes. We derive uh, two minus s, uh, two expressions for minus s. Can we put them equal to each other and find sure. the correlation? Sure. 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 So the question is, uh, can we say that this quantity is equal to this quantity because each of them is equal to minus s? Of course. Yes. Yes. Similarly, minus p and minus p, therefore this quantity can be put equal to this. And similarly, um, v and v, these two can be put equal and these two can be put equal to each other. 
Absolutely true. <clears throat> uh, the point is that in all of these expressions, what is coming out very clearly is that um, these variables um, T, P, S, and V, they have that relationship which I described for conjugate variables. Each one of them is a derivative of one of these energy functions with respect to its conjugate variables. So entropy is derivative of this and this energy function with respect to its conjugate variable. So S and T have to be have to have this kind of relationship. Similarly, these two have the same conjugate relationship. Temperature is derivative of these energy functions with respect to its conjugate variable entropy. And of course, what is kept constant would depend upon what energy function is used over here. Similarly, I can say P and V have the same kind of relationship, or V and P have the same kind of relationship as we have defined for uh, the, the, the conjugacy of their relationship. They, they are called conjugate variables because one of them is a derivative of some energy function with respect to the other. This kind of relationship when two variables are defined as derivative of some energy function with respect to the other is the, what we call uh, the conjugate relationship between them. And that is very, very clearly visible in all of these expressions over here. And similarly, in the expression that I have over here, they appear together in this form. And they appear together in this particular form because a product of them is, has the dimensions of energy. So because the product of them has a dimension of energy, and therefore they appear in this particular form. One other observation uh, from these four relations is for you to just of keep in mind that when uh, T times dS appears, it appears with a positive sign. When S times dT appears, it appears with a negative sign. When P times dV appears, then it is with a negative sign. And when V times dP appears, it is with a positive sign. Okay? So, with this, then writing down these expressions become very easy, provided we know from the beginning over here that, you know, I can write down these four general relations that U is a function of S and V, H is a transform of this in terms of change of V and P, so H is a function of S and P, and F is a transform of U with respect to S and T, so F is a function of T and V, and G is a function of um, T and P. If you know this, if you know the general relationship of these functions on which variables uh, they depend, or actually they depend upon all the variables, but which variables are appropriately called as independent variables for them, in this case S and V for U and S and P for H and T and V for F and T and P for G, then all those four equations, writing down these four equations becomes very trivial. Okay? It becomes trivial because taking up any of these, if I were to write df, I will say df is something times dt and then something times dv. And if it is something times d, d, dt and dv, then I know that it has to be S with it and it has to have a P with it. 
And I know that P times dV appears with a negative sign, and S times dS dT appears with a negative sign, so I have this expression before. Okay? I can do, take another one, for example, this expression. I know that G, G is a function of uh, T and P, so it is a function of T and P. So dG will be written in terms of dT and dP. And because it is dT, so it has to have a minus S here, and it has to have a plus V here. OK? And try it for the other expressions also. So knowing this relationship, functional dependence on these variables, knowing this, one can write down all these four. And being a, after, after writing down all these four, four, four relations, these eight relations become pretty obvious. They come out very naturally from those four relations. Okay? So they come out completely clearly, and we have actually, you know, um, uh, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, crowd of relations uh, starts to make sense. We don't need to, uh, fortunately, we, don't, we wouldn't need to remember each one of them by heart. All right, and um, I will tell you the significance of these expressions in a minute. But before that, let me also, um, um, yes, let me also talk of another property of them. When we have, uh, no, U, uh, H, F, and G, these are all perfect differentials. And when we say they are perfect differentials, we mean the following. Any function f, which is a function of x and y, is a perfect differential if um, in writing um, uh, you know, this df will amount to saying because of this x and y dependence, df is equal to uh, partial differential of f with respect to x at constant y times dx plus partial differential of f with respect to y at constant x times dy. This is how we will write this difference. Df is perfect differential. In fact, I shouldn't say f is perfect differential. Uh, Df is perfect differential, OK? So I'm, I'm saying dh and du and df and dg are all perfect differentials. If we say that <clears throat> on this side, we have this quantity df by dx at constant y. And we have on this side df by dy at constant x. And if partial differential with respect to y, when you hold x constant, is the same as partial differential of this quantity with respect to x when y is held constant, then that is the condition under which uh, the uh, function f will be called a perfect differential. DF, DF, uh, df will be called a perfect differential. Okay? So this is the condition. Uh, this condition will hold. And all state functions are, 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 have this particular property that, that, uh, that, that uh, deviations in them are perfect differentials. Now, if this is the case, then we go back to, say, the first expression, du equal to 
TDS minus PDV and what we see over here is that in fact um, this is this is as I have read, written over there du by ds at constant v and this quantity minus p is du by dv at constant s right <clears throat> and according to if if du is a perfect differential then clearly I can say that d by dv of partial differential of u with respect to s at constant v and this at constant s is the same as on this side partial differential of u with respect to v d by ds of this quantity done at constant volume. So I have written this thing I have written this expression for uh, the quantities appearing over here and I can easily see that this amounts to saying that dt by dv at constant s is equal to um, minus dp by ds at constant volume. I am sorry my uh, what I have written over here is this dt by dv at constant s is equal to minus dp by ds at constant volume. So a relationship appears among derivatives in this manner. This is the, that, that relationship guided by this formula that you know we, were, we are able to write a relationship between these variables. Okay? Why did you equate uh, in the second step? Uh, this step? I followed this recipe. Uh, maybe I was uh, not very clear. So let me redo this whole thing. Um, I would start by saying that u equal to a function of s and v so that du equal to partial differential of u with respect to s at constant v ds plus partial differential of u with respect to v at constant entropy times dv all right and an expression which is like this okay and if this is true then i can write from here an expression of this kind which is this okay and from this expression I know that this is called T and this is called P minus P so I'm able to write down this expression okay so <clears throat> I should leave you sort of uh, um, this in this uh, jungle of uh, uh, symbols and equations and uh, ratios and all uh, one can get very easily heavily intimidated by them but there is no reason to be intimidated this is all very simple and straightforward fine 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 no problem Okay. Significance ki hai? This is a very good question actually. I am going to write four such relations. I am going to write four such relations and I will, um, maybe I should tell you the significance right now because you have asked this. Okay? The significance is um, that <clears throat> If we come across in a particular process an expression of this kind and uh, we do not know what this means 
because uh, keeping entropy constant is something which is uh, tricky and we don't know how to interpret this. We know that this thing means exactly this so that perhaps we can make use of this and do something about it. Okay? So uh, this is uh, uh, a kind of exercise in which we find um, equivalent derivatives. So there is this derivative and there is this derivative. There is no other way to, to see that these two derivatives are equal, <laughs> exactly equal. And what we are trying to do at this time is to find all such derivatives which are completely equal to each other. Okay, that will be um, one reason. The other reason is that very soon after this, after defining these relations, we will uh, go to see the, you know, the, the actually measurable quantities. We know that temperature, pressure, volume, uh, number, these are all measurable quantities. But then there are other measurable quantities that you actually measure in the laboratory, like heat capacity, like uh, compressibility, like uh, uh, coefficient of expansion, and so on and so forth. Those are actual system characteristics. We call them response functions. And we will actually then have, we would like to know um, the way to express any derivative or combination of derivatives in the form of those quantities that are characteristics of the system. Okay? And that is where we make connection with reality in the laboratory, what is happening in the laboratory. Um, okay, so so uh, in the, for the next uh, few minutes, when I work out the other four relations, other three relations, please uh, keep in mind that these are all defining equivalent derivatives. Defining equivalent derivatives. Next, we will take uh, h. h is a function of, we said, h is a function of s and p. So it, uh, dh is equal to partial differential of h with respect to <coughs> s at constant p times ds plus partial differential of h with respect to p at constant s times dp. And then using this relationship, we can easily write uh, this last relationship. We can easily write and we know that dh by ds at constant, dh at, by ds at constant, uh, dh by ds at constant p is equal to t. So it is actually TDS plus VDP. Okay? And we then using this relationship, we immediately conclude that DT by DP at constant S is equal to DV by DS at constant P. This is relationship number two. That was relationship number one. Similarly, I can start with the third expression. Df is equal to minus S dt and minus PdV. I have that expression over there. And therefore, this expression tells me that f is df is a perfect differential if minus partial differential of s with respect to v at constant t is equal to minus partial differential of p with respect to t at constant uh, t ah, volume. Yeah. Okay. 
this is relation number three. Is it clear how I got this expression? Right? Obscure who kisi ke liye to batayin. So it's all very clear. Eh? It's all very simple, straightforward. The last expression is dg equal to minus s dt and then plus v dp. <coughs> and from here we immediately get minus partial differential of s with respect to p at constant t equal to uh, partial differential of v with respect to t at constant p. So these are four relations that we get and these relations were obtained by Clark's James Clark Maxwell and therefore these are called Maxwell relations. <coughs> okay? Haji? Board niche kar do. Achha. Am I going too fast? I'm sorry if I'm, please stop me if I'm going too fast, okay? Um, you have too much to write in your notebooks and you may miss out uh, these points, okay? So, uh, these are four Maxwell relations. These four Maxwell relations give four um, equivalent derivatives or four equations equating derivatives. Yes? Four for top pay. All right. Why are, um, you see, all state functions would be perfect differentials. These are all state, state, state functions and therefore they are perfect differentials. Uh, any questions over here? I hope things are, there are too many equations floating over here, but these all can be put in a form where you can actually, um, Makes sense. In textbooks, in various textbooks, you will find um, what are called uh, mnemonics for them. Uh, diagrams through which you remember these uh, equations. And uh, you don't need to uh, sit down and cram them by heart. Eh? But then I can tell you a few tricks and you can easily see. Sorry? Formula sheet allow karte. So, magar mai jo kuch batane wala hu uske baad zarurat nahi padegi uske. Theek hai? Formula sheet ki permission mere courses pe nahi hoti. So, you will feel bad about it, but you have to do this. And this is the pattern in the pattern of the expressions. We will discuss it. And I think after that, you will not need any of these formula sheets. So, in the pattern, you will have to remember these four things. And once you remember these four things, कि किस-किस पे depend करते हैं ये, उसके बाद आपको किसी और चीज को याद करने की जरूरत नहीं है, then everything follows right away. और फिर मैंने उसके अलावा ये जो चार relations हैं, इनको मैं बता दूँ कि इनको या इनको इनका इनके अंदर क्या pattern क्या है इनके अंदर? इनका पैटर्न जो है वो ये है कि नो कॉन्जुकेट 
variables in the same bracket. आपके पास इतनी बहुत सी ब्रैकेट्स लगी हैं इनमें से किसी के अंदर भी आपको कॉन्जुगेट वेरिएबल्स इकट्ठे नहीं मिलेंगे किसी एक भी ब्रैकेट के अंदर एस और टी इकट्ठे नहीं है किसी एक भी ब्रैकेट के अंदर पी और वी इकट्ठे नहीं है ठीक है और उसकी जो वजह है वो ये है कि डी पी बाई डी वी जैसी चीज या डी एस बाई डी टी जैसी चीज ये चीजें जो है ये जो आपके एक सिस्टम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है जिनको हमने रिस्पॉन्स फंक्शन कहा है उनके अंदर जो पहले से मौजूद है ठीक है हाँ मतलब यह डी एस बाई डी टी इज हीट कैपेसिटी राइट डी पी बाई डी वी तो नहीं लेकिन डी वी बाई डी पी इसका इन्वर्स डी वी बाई डी पी जब आप किसी सिस्टम पे प्रेशर लगाएं और उसका वॉल्यूम कम हो तो दिस टेल्स यू कंप्रेसिबिलिटी ऑफ द सिस्टम गिव्स यू कंप्रेसिबिलिटी सो इसको डी पी बाई डी वी जो है इसको बल्क मॉडल्स कहते हैं और राइट तो ये जो ये जो ये जो वेरिएबल्स हैं जिनके अंदर ये एक ही ब्रैकेट में आते हो ऐसे ये सिस्टम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स के जो डिफरेंशियल डिफाइनिंग रिलेशन है उनके अंदर पहले से मौजूद है लिहाजा आप ये देखिए कि चार मैक्सिमम रिलेशन के अंदर कोई भी ऐसा रिलेशन नहीं है जिसके अंदर आप किसी एक वेरिएबल का उसके कॉन्जुगेट वेरिएबल से डिफरेंशियल ले रहे हो इसमें किसी में भी नहीं है सर और राइट सो दैट इज ए कन्वीनियंट थिंग टू रिमेंबर कैसा नहीं होगा और राइट और दूसरी चीज जो है वो ये के दे कॉन्स्टेंट हेल्थ जो वेरिएबल कॉन्स्टेंट है वो न्यूमरेटर के वेरिएबल का कॉन्जुगेट वेरिएबल है तमाम में ये आठ डेरिवेटिव लिखे हुए हैं आठ आठों के आठों में आप देख लीजिए कि जो कॉन्स्टेंट वेरिएबल is conjugate to the variable in the numerator theek hai na tamam mein dekha hai aapne aathon ke aathon mein dekha aap ke jahan kahin bhi constant likha hua hai yahan p hai to yahan pe constant v hai एस है टू टी है एस है टी है वी है टू पी है एंड वी एंड पी एंड टी एंड एस एंड टी एंड एस एंड पी एंड वी तो ये कॉन्जुगेट वेरिएबल्स इस तरीके से प्लेस्ड हैं ये और तीसरी चीज जो है वो ये कि न्यूमरेटर ऑन वन साइड इज कॉन्जुगेट टू denominator on the other side ठीक ये भी आप देख लीजिए आठों के आठों में एंड टेक अ टाइम एंड सी के इनमें यहां पे अगर p है तो इधर यहां पे डिनोमिनेटर में p है तो इधर न्यूमिनेटर में v है यहां पे न्यूमरेटर में अगर एस है तो इधर टी है एंड दिस इज द पैटर्न स्प्रेड आउट एवरीवेयर इन ऑल दीज फोर रिलेशंस ठीक है अब अगर ये आपके सामने हो तो फिर आपको आ, लिखना पड़ा एक चौथा है वो ये है एस एंड टी इन वन ब्रैकेट विल Um, have a minus sign. ठीक S और P यहां पे है एक ब्रैकेट में माइनस साइन के साथ और S और P वहां पे है एक ब्रैकेट में माइनस साइन के साथ 
उसके सिवा कहीं और मानस आय नहीं है right? जी ये तो फर्क प्लस हो गया ना भाई यानी इसके बारे में परेशान हो रहे हैं आप लोग <laughs> अच्छा ये भी करना पड़ेगा मुझे अच्छा ओके okay. तो एस एन पी इन वन ब्रैकेट है माइनस साइन विच इज हेयर एंड इज इन टॉप ओवर दियर अभी चार कंडीशन के बाद आपके लिए इसके मैक्सवेल्स इक्वलेंट बनाने बड़े आसान है बहुत आसान है अब आपको उसको देखने की जरूरत नहीं है अब आप ये यहाँ पे कहें कि जी यू हैव इसका मकसद क्या है आपको इक्वलेंट देखने हैं कि कहीं इनके इक्वलेंट क्या बनते हैं किसी एक वैल्यू किसी एक डेरिवेटिव का इक्वलेंट क्या होगा सो लेट अस सपोज कि यू से के डी वी बाई डी टी और अगर ये है तो आपको मालूम है कि इसका मैक्सिमम इक्वलेंट अगर होगा तो इसी तरह होगा कि यहाँ पे पी हो ठीक यहाँ पे पी है तो फिर इस टी की वजह से यहाँ पे एस है इस पी और वी की वजह से यहाँ पे पी है और फिर इस एस की वजह से यहाँ पे टी है और एक मानव साइन यहाँ पे एस और पी के ब्रैकेट के एक ही ब्रैकेट में होने की वजह से स्ट्रेट अवे राइट मैं अगर कोई और मिसाल लू के डी पी बाई डी टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट अब मुझे करना मालूम होगा कि ये पी है तो यहाँ पे वी होना चाहिए और फिर यहाँ पे टी है तो इधर एस होना चाहिए और यहाँ पे पी है तो यहाँ पे वी होना चाहिए और यहाँ पे अगर एस है तो यहाँ पे टी होना चाहिए एंड ऑफ दिस इज वन ऑफ द रिलेशन डिड यू फॉलो कि कितना आसान ये लिखना आपको याद करने की जरूरत नहीं है चारों के चारों आप लिख सकते हैं यू कैन पर यू नो समाइम्स राइट देम इन सच ए मैनर कि जिसकी वजह से ये डुप्लीकेट बार 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 के सामने आपके आए लेकिन ये कि इफ यू क्लोज योर नोट्स एंड यू नो स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट दी कीप दीज फोर पॉइंट्स ऑफ पैटर्न बिफोर यू राइट डाउन एनी डेरीवेटिव एंड इफ यू कम अक्रॉस फॉर एग्जाम्पल डी पी बाई डी वी यू विल इमीडिएटली से नहीं नहीं इसका तो मैक्सवेल इक्वलेंट एग्जिस्ट नहीं करता क्योंकि एक ही ब्रैकेट के अंदर दो कॉन्जुकेट वेरिएबल्स तो नहीं हो सकते लेकिन अगर यहाँ पे एस होता तो इमीडिएटली आप इसको लिख सकते हैं यहाँ पे वी आ जाएगा और फिर उसके बाद यू विल हैव डी टी एंड यू विल हैव डी वी एंड यू विल हैव एस ओवर एंड दे विल बी ए माइनस आई गुड गुड so writing down these maxwell's relations is uh, no big deal aapko uh, ye char rules agar pata ho aur aap baith ke 10 minute practice kar le mukhtalif likhte hue cheeze to aapko ye sare ke sare variables mil sakte hain aur uh, jitne maxwell's relations hai ye sab aapko uh, aasani ke sath uh, work out ho kiye ja sakte hain okay so i have uh, therefore लुक एट दिस अच्छा ये तो ये बातें हुई फिर इसके अलावा ये कि आई वुड ऑल्सो टेक यू बैक टू एन अदर थिंग आई हैव टोल्ड यू सम लेक्चर्स गो एंड दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट वो ये कि नहीं बल्कि उससे पहले मैं आपको ये जो जो रिस्पॉन्स फंक्शंस हैं उनके बारे में आई शुड नाउ जस्ट टाइम इज कम टू गिव यू नो लिस्ट ऑफ दोज डेरिवेटिव्स ओके सो रिस्पॉन्स फंक्शंस And these response functions, as I said, are simply system characteristics. और उसमें हमारे सामने वो है कि जिनको हम कुछ तो वो हैं जो हम देखते रहे हैं heat capacity, heat capacity, is uh, 
ds by dt, t times ds by dt. Now, you have to know that in this heat capacity, mein, heat can uh, enter the system or leaves the system, and in entering and leaving the system, the, uh, it can, it can uh, follow uh, particular paths. So, the question is that this path dependent quantity. Hai ye. Path dependent hone ka matlab ye hua ke you will you will specify what is being held constant over here. And this x can be uh, P or V. And therefore you have uh, T ds by dt at constant v and t ds by dt at constant p. Alright? So there are these two heat capacities which are quick parallel lecture channel right I think which there is a parallel lecture going on over here. Discussions are going on here. What is happening here? Okay. Um, this is CV and this is CP. Similarly, we have uh, a quantity called uh, uh, change in volume with pressure. When uh, volume is changed with pressure, then um, this uh, per unit volume uh, and because with increasing pressure volume decreases, so a negative sign over here, and you say it can happen in the two conditions, then this is called compressibility. And X can be um, isothermal or um, uh, adiabatic. So isothermal, we have therefore, uh, I, and the symbol for this is uh, the Greek word kappa. So we have therefore kappa T, isothermal compressibility defined as minus one over V dV by dP at constant temperature. And we have what is called isentropic compressibility or at times adiabatic compressibility as 1 over V dV by dP at constant entropy. Or a or jo expression hai jo characteristic system ki wo hai um, uh, Changing volume of the system with temperature. Um, system volume changing with temperature. And this can also be with per unit volume. And since volume can uh, uh, change, um, uh, well, there is only one way, which is when you keep pressure constant. And this is called. Uh, and since uh, as pressure pressure increases, vol temperature increases, volume also increases. So this is a positive quantity, and this is called coefficient of thermal expansion. So we have therefore defined. Five um, system characteristics or system response functions. 
systems would respond to, sorry? Uh, so there, there are two of those and two of those, okay. So compressibility, if you, if you, if you, uh, you know, compressibility, heat capacity and uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, you're right. But then because it can be under two different conditions, therefore they are regarded as two different things like those two as two different things. All right. <coughs> All right. Uh, the question is that if you ask a question, then this expression will be given to you, or you will have to remember it yourself. Um, my question is, initially, um, while you are still doing practice with them, we will tell you that this is what it means, and you need to work it out. But uh, with uh, time, uh, you will use them so many, so often, that you will basically then, you are expected to know these response functions uh, fairly well by the end of this course. That you wouldn't need to be reminded uh, what their mathematical expression is. So, constant variables, what Constant variables, Normally, normally these are the uh, conditions which are given by um, uh, experiments. When you're performing these experiments and trying to measure change in volume with pressure, then you uh, will need to keep either temperature constant or you keep to insulate the system completely, right? And that is why you would know uh, what is to be kept constant. But there cannot be anything else kept constant over here. How can you keep anything else constant? You can't keep V constant because otherwise there will be zero. You can't keep P constant otherwise you won't be able to define this variable. So the only thing possible is that you can keep either T constant or S constant. Uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, which value of V would you use because V is varying in the process and we are also dividing it? By okay, so his question is, that if we are writing down this expression, and if v is a variable, what will you, what value of v will you use? This is the question, right? Um, this actually is something which is defined in terms of, this is a quantity, this quantity, change in volume per unit pressure, is a quantity that will need to be defined as per unit volume. So change in volume, per unit volume. You can't, uh, for example, if you have a, such a big thing and you let it, let the volume increase and even 10% increase will take it over here. But you have such a small thing and a 10% increase will be very, very small. So it will have to be per unit volume. Okay? So this is physically, it makes sense to have these quantities defined as per unit volume. So what the original volume was. All right, the answer to your question. Um, similarly, over here, you are varying temperature also, but then at certain temperatures, heat capacities are defined, very well defined. And you calculate heat capacities at those temperatures. Okay? Very good question, and this is the, going to be the next point. Yes, yes. These, these equations are, uh, what good are these equations for? This is your question. Where are we going to use them? Um, why this uh, whole uh, jungle of equations and uh, you know, intimidating algebra and all that? So this is going to be the next point. And I uh, did not quite actually spend more than uh, two lectures on this. Um, uh, it was necessary, number one, to tell you how different thermodynamic variables are related to each other. Okay? So that necessity has been fulfilled by describing various relations. The uh, <clears throat> intimidating nature of these uh, relations, I hope I have been able to um, soften it down by giving you some hints about them and by telling you how these things can be written uh, without remembering them. 
you can always do that. But now that I have defined, क्या हो रहा है बहुत बातें हो रही हैं आपस में मैं एक दूसरे को समझाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं यही तमाम चीजें और कोई समझ नहीं पा रहा है आप लोग बोले जा रहे हैं अच्छा तो जिनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है वो इसके बाद एक ट्यूटोरियल क्लास होगी जिनको समझ में आ गया वो उनको बताएंगे हैं नहीं ओके लेट मी लेट मी देन कम टू दिस क्वेश्चन क्या अब ये इनका फायदा क्या है इनका एडवांटेज क्या है आई विल ट्राई एंड डिस्क्राइब दिस वेरी ब्रीफली अच्छा अब मैं एक बात और बता दूँ यहाँ पे सिंस आई एम डीलिंग विद रिस्पॉन्स फंक्शंस तो फिर अगर हम फर्श किया कि ओके देर इज अ क्वान्टिटी कॉल्ड बल्क मॉडलस This is something which is often measured, and this is uh, V times dP by dV at constant temperature. So this is actually minus uh, one over kappa t easily. Okay. Um, next, I can um, write down. If you have a quantity, if you have a magnetic system, then when you apply magnetic field, uh, system's own atomic magnetic moments will turn in response to the, that magnetic field. The magnetization of the system will increase with magnetic field, and therefore there is a variable called magnetic field, and there is a variable called uh, magnetization. And I have said that um, um, magnetic work is uh, h times d m, right? So there is a response function for this also, which is called magnetic susceptibility, which is directly measured in laboratory. And this is a partial differential of magnetization with magnetic field, and written as the Greek letter. Chi, and again over here, you can have either constant temperature or you can have constant entropy. It is very much like compressibility of the fluid system. Uh, very much like the compressibility of the fluid system. In the, in the V and P enter into mechanical work. And H and M appear in magnetic work, so relationship between M and H is the same as between V and P, except that with pressure volume decreases, with magnetic field volume does magnetization doesn't decrease but increase. Okay, and therefore this is susceptibility. Sorry. No, no, no. Either this or this. Either. Uh, I, I, it can be isotropic susceptibility, or it can be um, adiabatic susceptibility. Uh, if you have uh, the dielectric response, if you have a, an electric system, you can have dielectric response, which will be change in polarization when electric field is applied to the system. And so on. I can I can name a large number of these response functions, and I will, but I'll just uh, um, you know leave it at that, and come to the point which is important point over here, which is why we are looking at all these things. Okay. I think I should start from
we took uh, uh, a, a relationship exists between various response functions. For example, uh, CP minus CV, the difference between them, you have known, you have uh, come to um, know of it in terms of, um, um, in for an ideal gas system, that CP minus CV is equal to R for an ideal gas system. But in general, this is equal to T times V times alpha P squared over KT. All right? And uh, we will need to uh, quickly convince ourselves that this is the case. We will need to convince ourselves that this is the case. Um, how do we convince ourselves? Um, start with और कोई सवाल हो तो ओके सो दे स्टार्ट विद एस एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ टेम्परेचर एंड प्रेशर यू कैन ऑलवेज डू दैट टेक एनी वेरिएबल एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ एनी अदर टू वेरिएबल्स और थ्री वेरिएबल्स देन वी कैन राइट d s as partial differential of s with respect to t at constant p times dt i'm doing this again and again because this is what you um, need to do to um, know how these things work so we have therefore a very obvious statement about change in entropy when temperature changes and pressure changes Now, um, we can do the following. We can divide this expression by dt and dt and divide this by dt and then take volume constant when we have this then on the left hand, on this side we have a partial differential of S with respect to T at constant volume is equal to partial differential of S with respect to T at constant pressure plus partial differential of S with respect to P at constant temperature and partial differential of P with respect to T at constant volume. Now you cannot cross out P from here and here because this bracket is for constant temperature and this bracket is for constant volume. All right? But if I multiply from the, on the left by temperature all the way, then I have over here Cv is equal to Cp by definition. This is Cv and this is Cp. And then I have plus T times partial differential of entropy with respect to P when temperature is kept constant and partial differential of P with respect to temperature when volume is kept constant. So we have some means to um, calculate a difference between CP and CV for this expression provided we are able to now solve that last bit over there. And um, it is over here that some of the algebraic um, expressions will be used. This is one expression. In fact, in both of them, one can use, uh, in both of them, one can use uh, Maxwell's relations, right? Here, 
I can use Maxwell's relations and write as dv by dt at constant p. T can run straight away with a minus sign. T can अब ये मुझे मैक्सवेल्स रिलेशंस देखने की और उन्हें याद करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी, knowing that s and p and and with t like this, I can use Maxwell's relations, Maxwell's equivalent. So I found its Maxwell's equivalent in the straight away manner. For this p, I put v. For s, I put t. And then this this uh, for with this v over here, I put p. And s and p being in the same bracket, I put a negative sign. All right. So I and this is something which I can then relate with. Uh, uh, this quantity over here, dv by dt at constant p is v times alpha p. So this quantity is equal to minus v times alpha p. This quantity. And then I need to now calculate this quantity dp by dt at constant volume. How will I do that? How will I do that? This I can do by using the cyclic rule the cyclic rule says the negative sign comes in because s and p are in the same bracket and if you go back to my expressions over here d ds by dp at constant t ds by dp at constant t is minus dv by dt at constant t it's right over here ठीक क्या सवाल कोई सवाल नहीं ओके सो साइक्लिक रूल इज रिकॉर्ड डी एक्स बाय डी वाई एट कांस्टेंट जेड टाइम्स डी वाई बाय डी जेड एट कांस्टेंट एक्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाय डी जेड बाय डी एक्स एट कांस्टेंट वाई इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन अप्लाई दिस रिलेशनशिप and when you apply this relationship then you have a formula which is uh, worth remembering which says that this is equal to minus dz by dy at constant x divided by dz by dx at constant y this is the formula from here one can get this relationship but this is what i am going to use now because for this dp by dt at constant v i will say this is equal to minus dv by dt at constant p divided by dv by dp at constant t and here i can see already two response functions peeping through these expressions dv by dt at constant p is alpha p so v alpha p so this is equal to minus sign outside and v times alpha p and dv by dp at constant t is this which is minus v times kappa t minus v times kappa t so minus minus v v cancel out and this is alpha p over kappa so this is equal to alpha p over kappa t and hence this entire thing is equal to this and i can now put this back cv is equal to cp cv is equal to cp plus t times the first thing is minus 
V alpha P and the second expression is uh, alpha P over kappa T and therefore I have Cp minus Cv is equal to T v, Tv alpha P squared over you have any upper likhat expression over there? That expression it stands. This is this is where we derived it. All right. Now, its derivation can the jo algebra is mis tamal hua hai. That algebra is a very, very not a very high level algebra. It is a fairly simple and straightforward algebra. What we did was that we used we have I have already introduced this expression to you. I used this expression and I used Maxwell's equivalent over there and I got this expression. In fact, Maxwell's equivalent can be a relationship in our pass dp by dt at constant v. Ye expression. This expression is equal to this. This ki wajah se hume malum hai ke ds by dv at constant t is also going to be alpha p over kappa t. Jaise yaha pe ye expression is ke barabar hua hai. All right. So, बहुत से thermodynamic relations, मुख्तलिफ processes के जो हम work out करेंगे, वो depend करेगा इस किस्म के algebra के ऊपर, इसके बाद. Okay.